All right, so we should be live uh, on the stream now. So let's uh, let me go back to the windows I want here. Um, and sorry, it took me a second to get uh, get everything um, um, get everything set up uh, for today. So um, let me see. Um, all right, well, so let's see who we got in the chat. All right, we get looks like we got a couple people. Um, and my sister is blowing up my phone. She's like, you're late to class, Bubby. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, all right, so, uh, so let's get to it. So last time... Um, um, well, for, first off, I'm, I'm streaming from my PC today instead of my laptop. Um, one of the hopefully good benefits of this is that uh, I've got a little bit more screen real estate uh, than uh, than I would on the um, on the desk. I mean, on the laptop, so that will hopefully make things a little bit easier for us. Um, so I wanted to return to the program that we wrote at the end last time, uh, which was um, uh, we we actually did not do full subtraction. All we did was negation. So if we go back to, uh, let me copy the code here and go to uh, Joel's emulator. Uh, and then I'm just going to paste my code in here. Hit enter. And then you have to, um, oh, okay. So apparently I can't be heard on stream. So that's... Um, annoying um, let me see why um, Filippo says he hears me but Reese doesn't okay Reese I think the problems on your end bro not uh, not the streams end um, all right let me get out of inception mode here so, uh, guys on the stream, does it is it loud enough? Uh, is it, am I quiet or is it uh, does it come through pretty good? Perfect. Okay. All right. Well, Reese, check your um, make sure you don't have the muting on on the stream because uh, sometimes I think uh, if you load Twitch, it'll it'll default to muting the audio. Um, oh, good, thank you. All right, so anyway, so this is the program that we had. Um, and one thing to, um, one thing to uh, keep in mind is that when you paste the code up here in the URL, it doesn't initially load it in until you hit refresh. Um, so don't, uh, just remember that little trick there. Um, all right, so anyway, so we got our code loaded, and what our program did was um, if we put a number over here in cell, let me blow this up a little bit so it's easier to see, um, put, a, uh, put something in cell uh, F0, I just put 06 in there, uh, then it will take the, uh, compute the negative of that and put that into uh, cell F1. And then we can hover over it with the inspector to see that we got, in fact, the correct answers. So, okay, great. Um, all right, so, but this is not actual subtraction. All this has done is negate a number. So let's modify it. Um, and so let me uh, copy and paste everything and make a new file. Um, and let me save this. All right, and um, paste everything in. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to change this to uh, load F0 and F1, compute the difference, 
output answer to F2. Um, okay, so we're basically going to tweak the program that we have. All of that's got to disappear. Um, so this time what we want to do is actually do some subtraction. So again, the program as currently written only does negation of a number. And how do we turn that into subtraction? Well, what we do is if we want to compute a minus b, what we really compute is a plus negative b. So uh, remember that to get the negation of something, all we have to do is flip the bits and add 1. Um, and then addition, we already have an operation, uh, an instruction to do that. And so that this is what we'll compute, but that's what it actually does. Um, okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to load in. Now we have two numbers to work with. And let's put the first number in register 1. And this time, though, we have a second number. So let's put him in register 2, the bit pattern FF and O1 in registers 3 and 4, respectively. That will change this instruction here, this instruction there, um, and we'll have to modify some of these other ones here in a second. Okay, um, so um, if we're going to load the um, the two numbers into registers 1 and 2, then the bit pattern for all 1's, uh, FF, we load it into register 3, then this instruction here needs to change. So how do we negate uh, something? Well, we flip the bits and we add 1. But which number or which register's bits do we want to flip now? Now it's register 2's bits. And so we need to change this from 1 and 2 to become 2 and 3. Um, so now what's in register 5, because we can't reuse register 5, uh, will be the result of flipping all the bits and adding, or sorry, just flipping all the bits. Um, and then uh, we need to add 1, so we'll add 4 and 5, and let's put the result in register 6, and then we need to store 6 to F2. Oops, F2. Okay, so very minor uh, change. Okay, essentially what we're doing is we change the program to instead of negating the number that was uh, loaded in from F0, now it needs to load in the number from F1. And then there's one instruction to add here, which is um, register 6 has the result of doing the negation. We need to add it together with the, uh, the original, uh, the, the first number from register 1. So this bit here just negates the second number. And then that part there is going to add it, the negation, uh, to the first number. And then where is our answer? It's actually in register 7 now. So that's what we'll put out into memory. Um, OK, so now what we need to do is we need to translate this all into our uh, assembly code. So let me blow this up a little bit and uh, get rid of the um, get rid of that. Um, okay, so there's our, our little uh, table, our legend, and so we just need to fill everything in. So let's see, what will this be? 2-2-F1, two, two, or sorry, 1-2-F1, because we're loading a specific number. This will be 2-3-F2-4-0-1, two, 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 F, F, two, uh, XOR is 9, answer is going to register 5, we're XORing 2 and 3, uh, 5, 6, 4, 5, this one will be uh, 5, 7, 1, 6, uh, the store is 3, 7, F2 now, and then we can halt. Um, okay, so, uh, so Filippo, we're using both different loads, 
the first two loads are uh, we're loading uh, pieces of data from memory so the first two that's why it's opcode one because uh, we're loading whatever's in memory cell F0 into the first register whatever's in memory cell F1 into the second register and so that's it for the that kind of load and then the second two uh, instructions here are loading uh, specific numbers uh, we need the bit pattern that's all ones which was FF uh, in order to flip all the bits and then uh, we also have to load in the bit pattern of one because we had to add one so okay um, all right so are we good with the let's just go through these in in sort of stages here any questions about the load the four load commands um, that we have there okay yeah any questions about the load commands um, all right, uh, any questions about the XOR and the add, the first add command? Uh, so those two instructions. Uh, and just to, by way of reminder, the XOR is where XORing against a bit pattern of all ones was our trick for flipping everything. And then we have to add one to get uh, the negative, right? Because two's complement, you flip the bits and add one. Uh, then this addition was the actual sort of uh, the whole point of the program was to do A plus negative B, and then we've got to store our answer out to memory, and I just chose to put the answer in F2. Um, doesn't really matter where it goes, uh, and then we halt. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's go through and copy all of the instructions. Uh, uh, let's see, why do we use XOR again? Is that the flipping of the bits? So, yeah, Teague, uh, we have to, in order to flip the bits, um, well, in order to compute the negative, the procedure that we we use for that is to flip the bits and add one. And the trick for flipping the bits is to XOR against a bit pattern of all ones. Uh, and uh, so that's what we did on Friday um, with the, um, uh, that part we started on the iPad to kind of see why it was that XOR along with the bit pattern of all ones was the droid we were looking for. Um, okay, uh, so then let's see, I did 5716, so now 37F2 and C000 is our, um, um, our instructions. Okay, so now let me go back to the emulator and let's load in the code. All right, and again, notice that it doesn't replace the code when you hit enter. You have to also then hit refresh, and then it'll do it. Uh, okay, so we uh, this is our first program that's spilled beyond the first row of memory, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so let's put uh, two numbers in here that we want to do subtraction with. So I'm just going to pick arbitrarily uh, 7 and 5, and hopefully we get 2 out of this. So let's uh, clear and run it, and then watch the registers over there. So the first step, we're loading in all of our numbers. Uh, then we're doing the XOR. Then we add 1 to that. Then we do the subtraction, basically, and store. And lo and behold, we got 2 as our answer. That makes sense, because 7 minus 5 is 2. Um, okay, so let's change the numbers and make sure that I haven't been uh, messing with you guys. So let's do something, how about, um, all right, how about 4, 2, and, oh, this will be fun. All right, so what do you guys think the result of this is going to be? So 4, 2 is 66, and FF is negative 1. So what should I get here in my answer in hex? Uh, 
so in decimal, it'd be, yeah, in decimal, it would be 6, 7. In hex, it would be, well, the good news, Teague, is you don't have to convert it because it's just 4, 2 minus a negative 1 ought to be, uh, how about 4, 3? Right? Because you get to 6, 7 the same way that you get to 4, 3, right? You just add 1. All right, so let's uh, let's check it and make sure it works. And sure enough, there we go, four three. So um, yeah, so this works, right? If we're subtracting a negative, then that's really the same as addition. Okay. Um, now where this can go wrong, though. Uh, or seemingly wrong, let me put in the number 84, for example, which represents negative 124, and let me put in here 08. All right, so what's negative 124 minus 8 in, in, uh, in base 10? Well, you'd think it's going to be negative 132, right? Because negative, if you pop, pop out your calculator, negative 124 minus 8 is negative 132. But what, uh, what are we going to get? We won't get 132 now, will we? Yeah, so we get 7C, which is 124. Okay, so what happened here is uh, an overflow error, um, and so we got kind of garbage out of this um, because we can't uh, compute numbers that are outside of negative 128 to 127. So remember that the uh, we're working in clock arithmetic, and um, so um, the... Uh, uh, the clock winds around, and that's exactly what happened here. So while we would expect to get negative 132, we actually get something much greater than that uh, because essentially the the clock cycle um, has has wrapped back around, and uh, so we've gotten kind of garbage here. Um, okay, but strictly speaking, this is the correct, if you will, answer within our kind of clock style 8-bit arithmetic system. Um, now, it is worth noting, uh, this is one thing that the, this machine doesn't have. Let me go back to um, our dear friend, the 6502, and let's, let me talk for a minute about its registers, if I can get down to where it's got the there's a nice little table in here. That's the wiring stuff. Uh, here we go. All right. So our register, or excuse me, our uh, CPU has 16 general purpose registers, 0 through F. Um, processors back in the day, so the 6502 really only had kind of like three general purpose registers, and that's not even quite right. Um, there's this thing called the stack pointer. You can ignore that for now. It had a program counter like our thing did. And then it had a special set, a special register called a flag register. And each bit of the flag register uh, was used to um, uh, basically notate whether or not something happened. So, for example, the Z is the zero flag. The C is a carry flag. The I is an interrupt flag. That's not uh, really important for us. Uh, D did some stuff for binary coded decimal, also not important for us. Okay. Um, but then the N, negative or sign flag or the overflow flag. So if we, um, uh, if our processor had a flag register, then what would have happened in that operation that we just did is that the V flag would have been changed from a 0 to a 1 to indicate that we had just occurred 
uh, sorry, that overflow had just occurred. Um, now, our machine doesn't have a flag register, um, which is somewhat unfortunate. Um, sort of a side project that I've got is to basically take this processor and make like a 2.0 design of it, if you will, um, to include things like uh, a stack pointer, um, which is used for things like recursion and procedure calls, um, the flag register, um, uh, fix the, uh, the, the floating point stuff so that it, it's uh, more, more consistent with the IEEE format, a um, few other things like that. So um, anyway, uh, so we don't have a flag register, but if we did, the overflow flag would have tripped on this operation. And then what we could have done is in our program, for example, we could have said, all right, if you have, if the overflow flag gets tripped, then signal like an error to the user or something along those lines. Um, but since there's no over flag for us, we don't have the ability to, uh, to do that. Um, Okay, so great. So we did some subtraction. Um, now, one of the things that we were just saying, right, was if we had an overflow flag, uh, then we could add something into a program that said, if something happens, then do something else. And that brings us to uh, the one instruction that we have not really talked about yet, which is the jump instruction. Oops. Okay. So we've not talked about this instruction yet. And this instruction and the way it works is why uh, I've said for a little while now, do not use register zero. And the reason is because this instruction has to use register zero along with some other register. Um, and so uh, by leaving register zero unused, we leave it so that it's available for use if we need to use one of these jump commands. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let me save this program, the one that we were working on, and let's make a new program. And let me switch this to assembly. Um, okay, so let's make a program that, um, um, well, let's see what we could do here to make, uh, make things fun. Uh, let's make a decision with something. So let's make a program that is able to detect uh, whether or not a number is positive or negative. Okay, so let's say load register one with the number that's found in F0 if R1 is negative, um, output O1 to F1, otherwise output OO to F1. Okay. So what we want to do is figure out how can we tell whether or not a number is negative to begin with. Okay, so uh, if we're working in two's complement, right, integers, um, there's separately we could do this for floating point, but how do we tell if a given two's complement uh, represented number is negative versus positive? So what's the giveaway? Yeah, the giveaway is if the far left bit is a one. If the far left bit is a one, we know we have a negative. If it's a zero, we know we have a positive. And that's also true, by the way, for the floating point system um, because we put the sign bit at the far left. That was just the, the order that we chose to put things in. Okay, so what we need to do is basically figure out how to extract the far left bit from a given number. All right, so um, let me go here. Let me type an example. 
of a negative number. Okay, so um, here, this number here, one zero one zero 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 one zero. I just picked something kind of uh, completely arbitrarily. Uh, so this would be, uh, let's see, what an eight and a four would be twelve. So that would be C three. Um, in hex or that in binary. Uh, here, let me get rid of that for the moment. Um, okay, so how could I look at just the first bit? So the way to think about this is which bits do I care about if I'm looking at um, whether or not a number is positive or negative? I only care about the far left bit. Okay, so bit number seven, uh, since we count from the right. Um, so I want to extract that bit, and I could care less what any of the other bits are. Okay, so here's the trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write a bit pattern that has a 1 in the bit positions I care about and a 0 in all other bit positions. Okay, and then, let me make some space here, I'm going to use a logical operation. So let's think about like how did we negate numbers or how did we flip bits. We used a specially chosen bit pattern along with a logical operation. Okay, so here I've chosen the special bit pattern, namely one followed by all zeros. Um, but I also need to choose a logical operation that's going to get rid of anything I don't care about and keep everything I do. All right, so any guesses as to what the logical operation is? There's only three really to pick from, so uh, odds are you guys will get it. <laughs> Yeah, this is where we're going to use AND. And it's actually like eight AND gates because there's one per bit. Um, so we're going to do a bitwise AND. Okay, and what I mean by bitwise is that the, the first bit on the right gets ANDed with the first bit, the second with the second, the third with the third, the fourth with the fourth, and so on. Okay, so what's going to be the result of this ANDing? Um, We'll get a 1 in the first position, a 0, and then a 0 in all other positions. Now, first off, um, if you work through bit by bit, it should be make sense why you get all zeros here. Okay, But the good news is we didn't actually have to compute any of that, right? Because what happens if you AND something against 0? What do you get? So if you and something against a zero, what do you get? Yeah, you always get a zero, right? The only situation that and produces a one is if it's one and one. So this is why we put all zeros there, because it doesn't matter what those bits were in the original, they're going to get destroyed and just made into all zeros here. And then the only bit that is in question is really the first one, and it will be a zero if the first bit of the original was a zero, and it'll be a one if the first bit of the original was a one. Okay, so moral of the story is if we and a number against uh, eight zero, because uh, remember, what is this bit pattern in hex? This would be eight zero, right?
so those are the only two possibilities that we can get out, right? Is either hex eight zero or hex zero zero. And the two situations that we would get that in is we get eight zero whenever the leading bit of the number is a one. Well, that meant that the number was negative. And we get uh, um, we get all zeros if the original number is positive or actually equal to zero. But point being, it's not negative. OK, so this trick and the trick that we use to flip the bits is called masking. Um, so the mask is the specially chosen uh, bit pattern. And then we used a, a correctly chosen logical operation, uh, those two things together. And I suppose it's maybe kind of appropriate that we're talking about masking, given that it's, you know, COVID-19 and yada, yada. Um, so, all right. So what this does, though, is it gives us a basis for making a decision. Okay. Um, it And the decision as to whether or not a number is positive or negative comes down entirely to whether or not we have uh, the result of our anding is 8, 0, or 0, 0. Okay. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to start adding something into my program. Um, here, uh, and in the far left, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write basically the memory addresses that the instructions are going to go into. And that'll become clear why that's important in a minute. The reason that I'm skipping by twos is because every instruction in this processor takes exactly two bytes. And so I'm going to think of it as one instruction per line. Um, OK, so um, the first instruction we need is to load register something with the given number. So let's load register 1 with the number from F0. OK. Then we need to load, oops, sorry, register 2 with our bit pattern 80. Okay. Um, now what we need to do is we need to do the anding. Okay, so then we go back over to our reference and we see that the AND command is opcode 8. Okay, so I'm going to All right, so I'm going to AND um, registers 1 and 2 together and I'll put that answer in register 3. Okay, it's got to go somewhere. Okay, now I need to load a bit pattern into register 0. Okay, because we need to compare the result of this anding, which is sitting in register 3, and we need to see if it's equal to one of those two numbers. Okay, so that means that we can put either one of them into register 0. And it, uh, whichever one we choose will change how the rest of the program is going to be written. Uh, neither answer is wrong, although I think maybe you guys will start to see after you do a few of these that one answer is maybe a better, uh, better one. Um, okay, so before we get to that, so Mike, uh, Y00204 and so on. Well, uh, that'll become a little bit clearer in a moment, but basically this instruction has to get stored in memory somewhere. And since on this architecture, the uh, instruction has to start in, or the very first instruction, has to start in the very first memory cell, uh, that's memory cell 00. And then the next one would be in cell 02, 04, 06, and so on. Um, so yeah, these numbers down here will uh, on the left will be more clear in a minute. So just roll with me for now. I promise they'll go somewhere. Um, okay, so um, 
which one do you guys want to load into register zero? We can either load in zero zero or eight zero. It's up to you guys. So pick one for me. All right, so Teague votes zero zero. All right, so we're going to load register zero with the bit pattern zero zero. Okay, now here is where we have to make the decision. Because what is sitting in register three is one of these two results. Okay, it's either eight zero or zero zero. So we need to compare. Um, we need to compare the result in register three with the result in register zero. Okay, so that would be this right here. Okay. And if the two registers have equal value, then we will change the program counter to a new number, okay? And that's why I've started to put the, the little memory addresses on the left to be clear there. Okay, so do we know where we need to jump yet? Well, no, we don't, okay? So I'm going to put in a placeholder here called XY, okay? And then, um, I'm going to put a, a basically a label in here. So, um, since you chose to put register uh, all zeros in register zero, then what that means is that register three will equal register zero uh, if the original number is positive. Okay, so that means that we want to jump to instructions if the number is positive. Okay, and if we don't, oops. Okay, so if we do jump, then we're going to jump basically down here and skip some instructions. But I don't know how many instructions I need to skip because I haven't written everything in between yet. Okay, so this thing here will jump to if pause. Um, but I don't know how, where if pause is going to be in memory yet because I haven't written everything. Okay, so this is a little bit weird. Because essentially what we're going to be doing is you guys think maybe about conditionals in the form of if, then, else. And what we're actually writing is the order if, else, then. Okay. So it seems a little bit backwards. Um, that's kind of annoying, but c'est la vie. All right. So what do we do if the number is negative? What did we decide to do? We wanted to output 01 to the memory cell F1. Okay, that means I need to load a register with the bit pattern 01. I need to write it to my memory cell and then I need to halt. Okay. All right. What that tells me then is that the instruction, the memory location that I would jump to is 1, 0 because it's going to be immediately after I'm finished with the other case. So that allows me to tell, to change this to 1, 0. And then what do we want to do if the number is positive? We said we wanted to load. Uh, reg we wanted to store zero zero. And then halt. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now is let's, um, oops, sorry. Dang it. Uh, let me make some space here. Um, and let's translate, basically, uh, get ready to assemble the code. Okay, so 
um, how do we opcode all of this? Well, very carefully. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, Mike, does this answer your question, though, as to why I was putting the memory cell addresses along the left? Um, so that we knew, that's how I knew that this instruction was going to be in memory cell 1, 0, and therefore why that part had to be 1, 0 right there. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so now how do we opcode all of this? Well, we actually are only going to opcode the instructions, right? The 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 4, and so on was just where these things are going to go into memory, okay? Um, so 0A, 0C, and 0E, well, uh, what's uh, 0, 8 plus 2, Mike? So what is, I'll type it. Yep, exactly. It's in hex, remember, right? Everything's in hex. So, okay. So that's why I skipped up 0, 8, or 0, A, 0, C, 0, E before I hit 1, 0, because, of course, everything here is in hex. Um, so, um, okay. So now the opcode stuff, we just do it just like we did before. So what is load one with uh, the memory cell F1, okay, so that would be, well, loading from memory is just like before, it would be opcode one, register one, memory cell F0. Opcode uh, two, register two, uh, bit pattern eight zero, okay? So the, the opcoding part of it is uh, the same as before, um, and uh, so the, the memory addresses stuff that we put in was really just an auxiliary helper for us. It doesn't actually go into the assembly itself or to the, uh, the machine code, okay? Um, okay, and um, uh, now what was AND? AND was opcode 8, okay, so we ANDed... 8312, then this was load register 0 with the bit pattern 0, 0. Then this one is jump register 3 target memory address 1, 0. And then the rest of them will be relatively straightforward. So let me just uh, go through and uh, do those real quick. Um, so then let's see, let's load 4 was 0, 0, uh, 3, 4, F1, and C, 0, 0, 0. Okay. So, uh, there are all of our instructions. All right, so now let me put them out into a big list. Um, Okay, so that I can copy this and put it in our emulator. And again, remember I have to hit refresh to get it to load. Um, okay, so I need to put a number uh, in cell F0 to test this. Let me start by putting a negative number. Um, so, uh, all right, so let's step through this one instruction at a time. Okay, so the first instruction is going to do what? It's going to load register 1 with whatever is in memory cell F0. Okay, so there it is. FF is now in memory. Then I'm going to load the number 80 into register 2. Okay, then I'm going to AND those two things together and I get 8, 0. All right, then I'm going to load register 0 with all zeros. Okay, now, Teague, this is what, um, uh, uh, yeah, Teague and um, uh, Mike, this is where, this is where both of your questions are, okay? The program counter. 
So look at the program counter. The program counter says where is the next instruction that you will load in in memory. Okay, if I have just loaded in B310, then where is the next instruction? Well, it's in the next cell of memory, in memory cell 0A. Okay, uh, now watch what happens to the program counter when we execute this instruction. Okay, nothing happened. Okay, and the reason nothing happened is because is memory or is 80 equal to 00? No. And so nothing happens and we just keep going about our merry way. And let me step so we load 04 in and we store it out. Okay. So, um, if the number was negative, we output 01 to uh, our thing. Okay. Let me change this number to a positive, okay? And that I think will make, uh, will answer Mike, you and Teague's question. All right, so let's pick 42. Okay, so I'm gonna clear the CPU, that just clears all the registers, and I'm gonna step through. So we're gonna load the two numbers in, we're gonna AND them. Okay, so right now, we just fetched the instruction B310. The program counter currently is 0A. That's where the next instruction I would load from. Okay? But watch what happens when I execute B310. What happened to the program counter? It changed, right? So it changed from 0A to 1, 0 which means that the next instruction I load in is actually this guy uh, right there. So what I've done is I've skipped over three instructions, right? And I've skipped them to memory cell uh, one zero, which has this instruction in, okay? And now I'm gonna load that instruction, 2400. I'm gonna execute it. I'm going to keep, and then after 1, 0, I get 1, 2, and then 1, 4, and then I halt. And notice what gets output there was 0, 0, okay? So the way that the jump command works is by changing the value of the program counter to something else, which allows you to skip um, from any place in, the, in memory to any other place in memory that you want, and the command, uh, the syntax for it, B310, 10 was the memory cell to do, um, uh, the memory cell to go to if the number was uh, positive, or rather non-negative, and yeah, okay, so what this means is if we go back to the assembly, look here, we've got six instructions. Okay, but only three of them ever actually get executed. Which three depends on whether or not the number was negative or not negative. So in the example that we just ran, we skipped past the if negative stuff from memory cell 08 with program counter therefore being 0A because that's the one after 08. Um, we skipped those three and we changed the program counter to one zero. And then once it's one zero, we said, okay, load in the next command, process it, no problem. And then load in the command after that and load in the command after that. Okay, so um, in the first example I ran where I put FF in, we did not change the program counter and we just did the next three instructions the last of which that's highlighted there was our halt instruction, so the program terminated. And we never got to the point where we would execute these three instructions, okay? So what we've done here is we've written something that structurally is like an if-then-else kind of statement, okay? So um, 
we'll talk about this a little bit more at the beginning on uh, Wednesday, okay? But we have the ability now to do um, do conditional expressions, and also, as we'll come to find out on Wednesday and beyond, we actually also have the ability to do loops, okay? Because nobody said that this memory cell had to be further down in memory. We could actually jump back up to a previous cell in memory and do something again, okay? So this jump command, uh, when used correctly, uh, can be used to do if then, if then else, uh, loops. It's really quite powerful. And uh, we'll see the details of how all of that works um, uh, in further discussions. So, um, okay, let me just uh, make sure that everybody is aware. Uh, there, a link to this file is on Canvas on the, uh, the home page for our course. And I have a bunch more examples in here, um, some of which we've also written, and some more details about uh, things. But basically what we started doing was um, uh, uh, this example here. And it's worth pointing out that we actually, uh, we basically just wrote um, this, uh, this program there with one minor exception. Uh, we chose to store register uh, to put bit pattern 00, zero and register 0 uh, today together in class. And in, uh, in my notes, I actually did it the other way. Um, either way works. Um, and um, I also picked a different memory cell. Um, so, okay, whatever. Uh, but point being, this is another version of the same thing. And, yeah. Okay, so what we'll um, what we'll uh, we'll talk about maybe some more next time, or a little bit more about this idea of subroutines, um, which is um, uh, something to help you structure a larger program, and uh, also a little bit more about the conditional expression. Uh, we'll also then get into loops at some point. Um, okay, so we should probably quit the stream here. Um, have a peek onto Canvas. I made some slight changes uh, to a couple of dates on assignments. Um, there was um, um, the um, uh, there was a, a short assignment that I had made originally due tomorrow night, uh, and then I realized that we hadn't talked about some of the stuff from it until today so I moved that to Thursday and then because I don't want to have two things due at the same time for you guys I moved the uh, the project uh, the video game final submission to Sunday uh, from Thursday give you guys a couple of extra days um, on that uh, all right so I'll go ahead and kill the stream here and uh, my or sorry Teague I'll answer your question in the chat uh, or in discord uh, and I will see you guys on Wednesday